So this is tutorial four, and it's meant to teach you <coughs> revise some basic concepts about linear independence and basis vectors. So let's first do this problem that you are given these three vectors one zero 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 one one and one zero one so they live in r3 and you want to find are they linearly independent so the basic formula you always use to check linear independence is that you multiply you make a linear combination of these vectors with some constants and put that equal to the zero vector and now you want to check if it is possible to get this zero vector by some non-trivial x1, x2, and x3. If the only possible solution is that x1, x2, and x3 has to be zero, then it would mean that it's linearly independent. So in this case, this, these are, you can think of it as you are having three different equations for each line over here, because this is supposed to be if I add these up, if I add these vectors, I'm get, getting x1 plus x3, x2, and then x2 plus x3 is equal to 0, 0, 0. So you can think that you are trying to solve these equations. A set of equations. So thinking in this term, let's go back to equation one, back at equation one. Now I know that I can write it. This is just a matrix multiplication. From the rules of matrix multiplication, I know that if I build up this matrix, and multiply it with this vector, then the rules of matrix multiplication, multiplying a matrix with a column vector is that you make linear combination with the, uh, with the numbers appearing in the column matrix and the columns which appear in the matrix which you are multiplying it with. So this is, again, same equation as one. So I'm just writing it as one dash. Now you want to see that if they are linearly independent or not. So if they will be linearly independent. The vectors will be linearly independent. If the only possible solution is that x1 is equal to x2 is equal to x3 is zero. We know that this solution always exists for this equation. This is a homogeneous equation. Homogeneous equations, system of equations. So if I put x1, x2, x3 equal to zero, they're always satisfied. I want to know if it's possible to get some other solution or not. So I know that the solution will be unique, will be unique if, if I write this equation like this. 
So if A inverse exists, what will happen? Then this will tell me that X is equal to zero, necessarily equal to zero. So the solution will be unique if A inverse exists. So all I need to do is then A inverse will exist if determinant of A is not equal to zero. So all I have to do is take this matrix and check its determinant. Zero one one. 1, 0, 1. So the determinant is 1 times 1 minus 0 plus 0 times some terms, which go away, minus 0 times, then plus 1 times 0 minus 0. So the determinant is equal to 1. So that means a is invertible. The solution is unique. And therefore, the vectors are linearly independent. Now let's move on to the next problem. This time, so this kind of method only works uh, when you have n vectors and you are in an n-dimensional space. So suppose now again, I'm in, I have R3, vectors living in R3, but I'm given these four vectors. And I want to know if they're linearly independent or not. So again, I'm building up this equation. I have four vectors, so I have four constants and put it equal to zero. And now I want to see if I have a non-trivial solution for x1, x2, x3, x4 or not. So again, using my knowledge of vectors of matrix multiplication, I can write it as a matrix equation. You have a three by four and a four, so you can multiply them. And this has to be equal to zero, zero, zero. Now to solve this, I can build up, I can use my usual methods. So I build up the augmented matrix and try to bring it to echelon form or reduced echelon form to see what kind of solution I get. So uh, I just have to do this one. These are already zero. So I multiply the second row by minus one and add to the third row. I get this. And now if you want to bring it to the reduced echelon form, it will be just a little bit helpful. I multiply the third row by minus one and add it to 
the first. So this, I don't need to do anything over here. This is not a lead variable, so I'm not worried about it. This is a lead variable. In order to go to the reduced echelon form, I have to make everything above it zero. So minus one, last row added to the first row. I didn't even have to go over here. I could just from here tell that the X4 is a free variable. So I will have solutions where X4 can be given any value. It doesn't have to be zero. So that means that original equation has solutions with not all Xi equal to zero. So that already tells me that the vectors are linearly dependent. But you didn't even have to do all this work. You could have already said that I have a three by four matrix. So when I bring it to uh, an echelon form, at most I have three lead variables. And I have four unknowns. So at least one variable is going to be free. So that means just by looking at the fact that you have four vectors and you have, you are living in three dimensional space, you know that they are going to be linearly dependent. And this we have discussed in class that in an n-dimensional space, R, R, like Rn is n-dimensional. If you have more than n vectors, they are already going to be, you just know that they are going to be linearly dependent. They cannot be linearly independent. Let's move on to the next problem. Uh, this time again, I'm in R3. And I'm given these two vectors. And I want to know if they are linearly independent or not. So again, the usual drill, make a linear combination and put it equal to zero. If I write it as a matrix equation, this is the equation I get. And if I build up the augmented matrix. This is what I have. And when I try to bring it to the echelon form, I have minus one times the first row added to the second minus one, three times the first row added to the third. So I see that I can now multiply, bring it like this. By multiplying with half to the second row. And now I can remove this one by adding minus times the second row to the third. So this 
indication that I had uh, three rows over here. I was living in three dimensions. I had three rows over here, two unknowns. But this, the last line is a zero line. And I have these uh, telling me that x2 is zero and x1 is zero. So that means the only solution is this and hence they are the vectors are linearly dependent linear sorry linearly independent how could this these vectors be linearly how could you have ever found that these two vectors were linearly dependent in R3. Well, the only possibility would have been if you had something like this. The two rows are zero, so that you will have one free variable. Some number here, two rows are completely zero, so you have one free variable. And that would imply that they are linearly dependent, but they're not in this case. So let's move on and do another one. This time, I take these two vectors in the previous problem, one zero zero and, sorry, 1, 1, 3, and 0, 2, 1. And I say, find a third vector. Vector, which is linearly independent with them. So how can you do this? Well, you can assume some form. Suppose the required vector, vector is something like this, A, B, C, and you have to find what are A, B, and C. So, you want it to be linearly independent, so you write this equation. In matrix form, this looks like And again, you can look at the augmented matrix and try to solve it. In these cases, you don't even have to write these zeros because they don't change. So even if you leave them out, that's fine. But I'm just writing it for clarity. So again, you try to bring it to echelon form. Uh, minus one times the first row added to the second gives me B minus A and minus three times the first added to the second gives me C minus three A. And now I can make a one at the lead position in the second row by dividing by two.
And now I make a zero over here. So adding minus times the second row to the third. So I have C minus three A in this position, minus B minus A over two. So if I write it carefully, this is equal to one zero A, zero one B minus A over two, and zero, zero, I have a C, I have minus three A's and I'm adding to it half an A. So minus three A's are six halves. So I'm left with minus five halves of A and minus B over two. Now, when will they be linearly dependent. Well, for them to be linearly dependent, you will have to have a free variable. So that is only possible if you have if c minus 5 over 2a minus b over 2 is 0, then the third vector is linearly independent. Otherwise, if you put anything else, then you don't have in the H, you have you have down to echelon form and you don't have a free variable. So for linearly independent, linear independence, you can put it equal to any number. Let me just for fun, for a concrete example, let it put let's put equal to one. And there's no other condition. You can choose A, B in any way, and then you have to choose C in such a way that this is true. So there's a huge freedom. There's not only one vector which is linearly independent with them. There's a huge, big freedom. So example, an example vector would be that I choose A is equal to zero, B is equal to zero, then C would be one. So in other words, this vector is linearly independent with the other two. One, one, three, zero, two, one. These three are linearly independent. But these are not the only one. I can choose, for example, uh, C is equal to zero and A is equal to zero. You don't even have to choose any one of them to be zero. You can give them any value. So if I choose C is equal to zero, A is equal to zero, and then I have to give some value to B. I can choose B equal to one. Well, not, not B equal to one. If I choose C is equal to zero, A is equal to zero from this equation, I will have uh, B is equal to minus two. And then in the b is equal to minus two. So this would be also a vector which is linearly independent with the other two. Now, but the issue, the thing is that if you have one vector which is linearly independent, you multiply it with any number it still remains linearly independent with the others. Because if 
x1 v1 plus x2 v2 plus x3 v3 implies that x1 x2 and x3 are zero if i multiply it with some alpha i can absorb it in this constant and since v2 v1 and v3 are linearly independent this still implies x1 x2 and alpha x3 are zero but alpha is non zero so this implies x3 is zero so that means this alpha times v3 is also linearly independent with the others so this is linearly independent but i can also multiply by minus half and this would be linearly independent let's find a vector which is linearly dependent which is dependent with other two so for that in the last line i have to put equal to 0 so if i choose a is equal to 0 my a is equal to 0 and let's say b is equal to 1 then for c i must have c minus 5 over 2 half minus b over 2 is equal to 0 2a minus b over 2 is 0 so that means c minus 0 minus b over 2 is 0 so c is equal to b over 2 so i give any value to b i know what is c so my vector would look like 0 let's give b a value 1 as i gave over there this one 1 and a half so this is linearly dependent and actually you can see that this is just i had this vector in my original set 0 2 1 so it's just a multiple of that it's half times that so that's we know that if one vector is linearly dependent then it's a linear combination of the others so it's just a combination of one of those and if i choose for example mm, i choose this time let's not put anything equal to 0 let's choose a is equal to 1 b is equal to 1 then c has to be because i have c minus 5 over 2a minus b over 2 is equal to 0 for them to be linearly dependent then c would be 5 by 2 plus half so it's just 3 so my vector looks like 1 1 3 and let's see if it's so it's linearly dependent with these other uh 1 1 3 12 it was it just came out to be equal to the one of the original ones and i can give some other value let's say a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 2 then c is 5 by 2 plus 1 which is 2 and 5 plus 2 7 halves so my vector would be then 1 2 7 halves 
and it's linearly dependent with these guys. So if I Um, let's now move on to some other problem. So this is problem, I guess five, I don't care about the counting. Now, suppose you are given that you're considering vectors of this form where x3 is x1 plus x2 and you want to know is this a subspace of r3 and if so what is the dimension and what is a basis for this subspace. So these vectors are of this form. Where x1 and x2 are completely arbitrary. Any vector of this form where x1 and x2 could take any form would be part of the set. And we want to know if this is a subspace or not. So as always, you just check if an arbitrary linear combination of two of them is back in the space or not. So I just take two elements, two arbitrary elements, they are of this form, multiply it with an arbitrary number, take another one, multiply with another number and see what do I get. So I get this and over here I get I can write this sum in this form. So it is something like this, alpha one, alpha two, alpha one plus alpha two, where alpha one is this, and alpha two is this. So it does belong to the same set. So that means these vectors do form this set this subset is a subspace. Now, what is the dimension of it? And what, how can I span this? So the vectors in this are of this form with arbitrary x1 and x2. I can break it up and write it like this. So this whole space can be spanned. This subspace can be spanned by the just these two vectors. And now all I have to do is decide if these vectors are linearly independent or not. If they are linearly independent, that would mean that they form a basis. And that would mean that the subspace is two dimensional. Because a set of linearly independent vectors which span a space 
is by definition the the basis and the number of element in the basis is the dimension so we can easily check if i form the augmented matrix i get zero one zero and then i can remove this as well by adding minus times the second row to the last so my only solution is that in this linear combination The only possibility is that A is equal to B is equal to zero. You could have just find it out much easier way. If I add this, if I add it up and write it, I get A, B, sorry, this is a one, and A plus B is equal to zero, zero, zero. So that implies A has to be zero and b has to be zero so the only linear combination which gives you uh, the zero vector is when the coefficients are zero so one zero one and zero one one are indeed are linearly independent with practice, you can just look at these vectors and tell if they are going to be linearly independent or not. Now, let's do another one. So problem six. You're given a matrix. and you want to find the null space of it. What is the null space? We know we know the following, that the set of all vectors which solve this equation, all x, we solve this equation forms a subspace. And we want to know what is that subspace. So to do that, you have to just write down this equation. So you are trying to find what values of x1, x2, and x3 solve this equation. Now, again, I can do it by looking at the augmented matrix. So I do minus two times the first row added to the second. So minus six, minus one gives me minus seven, minus eight into minus one, no, so there is, let's put, I think there was a minus four here. Yeah, 
Yeah, everything else is fine. So minus four times minus two gives me eight. Add it to minus one gives me seven. And then I just add the first row to the last. I get zero, zero, zero. Now I can divide by seven in the second row. Uh, actually by minus seven, I get this. And then I have to eliminate, because this is a lead variable, I have to, to bring it to the reduced echelon form. I can eliminate this three up there. So minus three added to above. So minus times minus three is a three, gives me a minus one here. And now I have the solution in front of me. X3 is a free variable. So that's alpha, can take any value. And then this equation tells me X2 minus X3 is zero. So that means X2 is equal to X3. And this equation tells me X1 is also equal to X3. So that means this vector, which I had assumed, takes this form with alpha arbitrary. So I can write it as so this is a one dimensional subspace because all its vectors can be generated by one vector, a linear combinations of only one vectors. And this is a basis for it. Basis has only one vector because it's a one dimensional subspace. Let's do another similar problem. This time you're, you're given this matrix. And you want to find the null space. So again, this is the equation. Sorry, it has four variables. and gives you then a two dimensional zero. So again, this form this matrix now I just multiply the first row by two and add it below I get two into minus two zero four minus four zero minus six plus six zero uh, minus two plus three equal to one. And to bring it to reduced echelon form, I can add the second row above.
वन टू माइनस थ्री जीरो एंड फ्रॉम हियर आई सी दैट एक्स टू एंड एक्स थ्री आर फ्री वेरिएबल्स एक्स फोर इज एक्चुअली इक्वल टू जीरो and x1 is equal to i have the that equation is telling me that x1 plus 2x2 minus 3x3 is equal to 0 so x1 is equal to minus 2 alpha plus 3 beta so my vectors in this subspace are of this form so i can write them as so this subspace is spanned by these two vectors and i can already tell you that they are linearly independent because if i check in the third place i won't be able to make a zero because there's a zero on in the first vector but a one in the second vector i won't be able to make a zero over here unless i put x2 equal to zero and in the second place i won't be able to make a zero unless i put x1 equal to zero so they are linearly independent so this is a basis for this null space and the null space is two dimensional let's do another record another problem so you are in p3 polynomials of up to degree 2 and you want to know that what is the dimension of the subspace spanned by these polynomials 2x and x minus 2 so what would be the span of this these two so i take some arbitrary constants s and t and make linear combination these are all the polynomials in this span span of these two so they are of this form two let me collect the constants 2s plus t x minus 2t times 1 where you don't have any x over here now i want to see i know that this is a subspace because span of any number of vectors is always a subspace i want to know what is the dimension what kind of space is this so i write a general vector in p3 which would be of this form and since this span is a subspace so it's one of the general vectors and now if i match i must take four vectors in this span i must have a is equal to 0 by comparing x square 
and b is equal to 2s plus t and c is equal to minus 2t. So I can make any t, make any c, any c is possible because all you have to do is choose t is equal to minus 2 over c. Similarly, any b is possible. Because once you are given a t, you can choose an s accordingly to compute any b. So that means the space is spanned by x and 1. And these are the basis vectors and it's a two-dimensional space. So let's stop it here.